Well, coming up on today's show, the car of the year is an electric one. Big award ceremony last night here in London. I'll give you all the details. I was there. Uh, also, Tesla find reverse gear on their recent price increases and Daimler adding more battery production facilities to Europe, this time in Poland. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. Wednesday, 23rd of January today. My name is Martin Lee and I've been through every EV story that I can find today. Picked out the ones I think you need to know about. As always, thank you to my EV.com for helping make this show. It's the world's first marketplace all about buying and selling EVs and connecting like-minded people. Uh, you'll find no piston cars on this website because it's all about electrification. So whether you're buying or selling, and plenty of us will be in 2019, check out myev.com. And welcome to the party, the newest member of the gang and producer of the podcast on Patreon. That is Edouard Pertinez. Edouard, thank you so much for signing up to be a new producer of the show. It's the producers of the show, the exec producers and those above as well who keep us going, keep us funded, and bring you this positive, optimistic view of the world every single day. A little little espresso shot of positivity for your morning routine, possibly while you're driving or exercising or doing your routines with the podcast uh, in your headphones, maybe, or blasting out. Well, we'll start with the reason the podcast is just a little bit late being published today, and that was a very late night for me last night. It was a swanky black tie awards do called the What Car Awards here in London at a very fancy hotel and a big, great ballroom and all the... There was loads of sort of 75-odd tables, big round tables, candles in the middle, that kind of thing, and, and a, a big slap-up dinner first, and then the award ceremony on the stage. And actually, for the car of the year, there was 21 or 23 subcategories, but for the car of the year, they actually had the car on the stage, ready to be revealed behind, uh, I was going to say a curtain, but that does disservice to how grand the entrance was. But the question was always... What will be the car of the year? So what car, if you're not aware, by the way, a magazine here in the UK, the awards have been going over 40 years, very influential. They're all about making, helping consumers make decisions. So it's a very influential thing. And when I got the invite last year, I thought it'd be interesting to go along to this and take the temperature in the room of how people are feeling about EVs because some of the motor shows last year, Geneva and Frankfurt, and this year certainly, people were making jokes like, oh, it should have been the electric car motor show. There were so many of them. So I thought what it would be like in a room full of the automotive industry because, yeah, so each of the car makers have a table or two there was a i was chatting to the table at audi uh, vw had a big presence there last night lots of uh, media people uh, who else was there sayat uh, there was a big honda table um which i think who got the biggest cheers um, i tried to talk to as many people as possible and so much optimism about uh, evs and electrification one of the uh, one of the also curious things about any awards kind of car rewards. They're always forward-looking, like the Oscars look back, if you like, at the films that have been out. Car rewards always seem to look forward at the cars which are going to be coming out. And it's funny and amusing that the car of the year here in the UK has had less than a 1,000 deliveries the last time I checked in Europe, and it's officially the best car you can buy, except if you walk into a dealer, you can't drive one away yet. But let's not understate the importance of a major magazine putting an electric car at the top of the pile. Not just winning its own category of electric cars, but the car of the year. I'll start with the big one, because I, if you follow me on Twitter, I've given it away, and maybe you've seen the news. The Kia e Nero. The Kia e Nero has been named the car of the year here in the UK. As the editor, Steve Huntingford, uh, said there's almost 4,000 variations of the 400 cars listed in the uh, back pages, the data section of the magazine. After 12 months of testing, we've whittled them down to the best in each class, with each one standing out above all of the others, and then the car of the year being top of the pile. And as he says, we've tested them over the last year. Except they haven't with the car of the year, because... They can't. But that goes to show the strength of the car. Now, in case you were wondering, by the way, uh, where's the Tesla Model 3 in all of this? Well, I think next year I would expect to see a pretty big showing uh, from the Tesla Model 3. However, uh, this was, uh, you know, European deliveries haven't started yet. They're on the boat. They're on They're on the ships can't call it a boat. They're on the ships, uh, but not quite making it in time for this awards ceremony. So why did the Kia e Nero win? Well, they said the BMW 3 Series would have made a worthy overall winner, having overcome a former car of the year to take honours in its class. And the Citroen Berlingo 
uh, the Cupra Ateca, also strong contenders, but the car uh, that they were up against, they had the misfortune to be up against, is the game changer. They say the game changer that is the Kia e Nero. The e Nero beats its rivals with uh, knockouts uh, rather than on points because it's sensibly priced, it fits into people's lives, and it has huge range for the money, allowing you to get to where you're going to go with no fear of being stranded by the roadside, they say. It makes a very practical family car loaded with luxuries and the right balance of comfort and composure. It's a stunning achievement, they say. And this is a car magazine, and they even still use phrases like stranded by the roadside. You don't hear anyone saying, if you don't put fuel in your piston car, you'll be stranded by the roadside. But it's still this weird thing that surrounds electric cars. I, how do you run out of electricity unless the charger isn't working? But that's an issue that we need to deal with. If you ended up at, at, at gas stations and petrol stations and they were closed, that would be dealt with. It would be front page news of the newspapers. And so, yeah, we need to deal with charging networks, making sure that there's reliability there. But even big magazines like this still using phrases like, the range means you won't strand it. You've got 50 miles of range on the car and you've got a 100-mile journey. What idiot sets off thinking, I'll probably make it? Anyway, uh, the winner of the smaller category, the less than £30,000, that was the Renault Zoe, uh, which is the car that uh, my wife drives every day. Uh, the 2017 electric car of the year is still compelling, they say, uh, given the pace at which the class is moving. Uh, still amongst the appeal, though, is the price. Unlike other sub-£25,000 options, uh, like the Smart 4.2 EQ, they say the range is really good because it's got that 40 kilowatt hour battery, 146 miles real world range they found. And some people opt to buy the Zoe outright. Personally, I think you should lease the battery, so does the magazine. It just makes sense because it, it kind of halves the price of the car, means the battery stays the property of Renault. It's the only bit of the car that can really go wrong. I mean, what else is going to go wrong? The light goes out. I mean, there's, it's under warranty anyway, but after the warranty expires, after the two, three years, what can go wrong? apart from the bit that Renault owns. So I'm very happy paying my £50 a month to lease the battery. Not everyone gets that, though, and I respect their decision. They want the car on the driveway to be the one they own. Ironically, 90% of people use finance to buy their car, uh, so they don't really own it anyway, but, and yet they still discount leasing the battery. Anyway, uh, so uh, they're saying which one you should go for, the R110. Uh, they say it's cheaper and faster, you get slightly longer range, but uh, the downside is... You can't charge as fast. Yeah, and of course, AC charging. That Renault Zoe, by the way, we're expecting a big update. Maybe the Geneva Motor Show. Uh, maybe, uh, was it Paris? One of those uh, One of those shows, they say that uh, the Renault Zoe is going to be unveiled and it uh, won't have just AC charging, but it'll get its CCS combo plug as well, which really will, if they keep the price low, really will make it the only recommendation you can make for a small city car with really good range. As for the other electric car that was recommended last night, the Jaguar I-Pace, and they said that Tesla has made the price point its own over the last five years, so Jaguar's had a huge achievement by a £64,000 Jaguar, a, a very expensive car, by the way, uh, but being an incredibly unnervingly quick car, they say. Not to 64.5 seconds, fantastic to drive, luxury interior. That's what people who I've spoken to say about the I-Pace, that the the Tesla feels like a, a tour de force of technology. The I-Pace feels like just a normal luxury car that happens to be battery-powered, and it can be dripping with luxuries if you want to. Uh, there is no Tesla-style 120-kilowatt supercharger network to repay, recharge the I-Pace in half an hour, but it can go 100 kilowatts charging. I think they're applying a soft... Maybe it doesn't at the moment, but they can apply a software update so it does get to 100 kilowatts. And look, there are charging networks certainly here in the UK, that are not standing still. And whilst the majority of charges going in are 50 kilowatts, I would expect very soon to hear some very big bits of news from very major players about some very fast charges. They have to be. They have to be. There's big investment going in. Uh, we're just waiting for those announcements. Uh, winner of the best hybrid, the Hyundai Ioniq hybrid. Winner of the best plug-in was the Volvo XC90 T8 and the What Car Reader Award. So this was a, a bunch of cars that they put to the readers of the magazine to say, what's your favourite car? And again, the car that won isn't even out of prototype stage, which is weird, right? I'm not sure why they put it in the list of cars, but they did. So the car that won, the Reader Award, of all the thousands of people that voted, was the Honda Urban EV. Wow. A car that, like I say, it isn't even in production yet. I mean, it's in camouflage spy pics. 
that I've seen on things like motor1.com. But that's incredible. So popular from its very first outing at the Frankfurt Motor Show. And this year it's going to be refined, heading towards production version. It's going to be expensive. We know the Honda uh, Urban EV. They've said that, yes, it's going to be a stunning small car. Great styling and good range on it, 150 plus miles. But it's not going to be cheap. They said, yeah, it will be premium. It's going to get that massive digital screen, big infotainment system, some smaller screens as well. It's going to be a real piece of luxury in a small form factor. Not going to be cheap. So that was my night last night. Uh, uh, not often I put a, um, a uh, my, my black tie outfit on. Last time I wore that was before Christmas, and as I speculated on the podcast uh, yesterday, I think it was, yeah, when I finally uh, tried to do the trousers up a little bit tighter, a little bit tighter than they have been before. So maybe, maybe have a salad for lunch today. Don't judge me. Right, a couple more stories today to bring you on the podcast. Three more stories to bring you on the podcast today. In the course of the electric initiative, Mercedes-Benz cars are going to build a factory in, in the Polish site of Jawor, I think I would say, or Jawor, uh, extending their global battery production network, they say. Marcus Schaefer is the member of the board of management for Mercedes-Benz cars, and he says this, and I quote, we will electrify the complete portfolio by 2022, and we will offer in each segment various electrified alternatives to our customers Customers, including more than 10, 10 pure EVs coming from Daimler by 2022. Uh, we will produce batteries on our own. What we consider a significant success factor in the era of electric mobility. After the production of high-tech engines, we'll establish additional future technology in Poland. The battery factory is the second largest investment at the new Mercedes-Benz site. End quote. Uh, so I think it's it's pretty fair to say that uh, Daimler have drawn a dash of inspiration from Tesla's way of doing it, which is uh, sourcing the cells. Although actually Tesla, of course, work hand in hand with Panasonic on the cell production as well, a gigafactory, uh, but making their own battery packs. Others have gone down the route of getting supply contracts for the packs and the battery packs, but Daimler want the cells. You give us the cells to a spec that we say, and then we'll make the packs because they want more control over that, which man, makes perfect sense since... Definitely understanding that uh, that chain all the way through of all your technology. They're buying cells on the world market and instructing the suppliers to produce them based on their special specifications. Uh, we can't wait uh, to see the fruits of what is a 20 billion euro investment. It's, uh, it, it, it's such an amazing piece of positive news, but you want it now, don't you? Like, If you're anything like me, I'm like, I want it now. I want, it, I want to drive these amazing cars now. Uh, still a few years away. A car that you can drive is the Audi e-tron. Those deliveries should be starting very, very soon after being uh, held back from sale due to a slight software issue that I think uh, scuppered their chances of having them in the hands of customers as early as they wanted. Uh, Audi are the exclusive shuttle partner as well for the uh, World Economic Forum in Davos. Since 1987, maybe you've been seeing lots of news in the general news about the World Economic Forum. They're now providing a fleet of 50 e-trons for a shuttle service. Uh, the World Economic Forum is happening uh, from yesterday, 22nd, all the way through to the 25th of this month, reports Mark Kane at Inside EVs. Well, the Audi e-trons are powered by green electricity as well through some very specially installed Ionity DC fast chargers. On top of that, uh, there is a 1.14 megawatt hour energy storage system in mobile charging containers. And so those being shuttled around the uh, World Economic Forum are doing it in silence, in luxury, in the Audi e-tron. Final story today is a curious one. Tesla is rolling back prices, uh, staying with Inside EVs, by the way. Uh, according to Electrex analysis, they say uh, Tesla were hoping to increase prices on an average of 33% at superchargers. The number's not specific to all markets. The automaker plan to adjust the pricing based on local energy costs and the area demand as well, which is slightly more subjective. So Stephen Loveday, some people had then taken to do the math on it, which showed supercharging, he says, could end up costing twice as much, uh, sorry, nearly as much as gassing up in some markets. Additionally, charging at some non-Tesla stations could be cheaper. Uh, truth of the matter is, if people cancel their reservations for Model 3s due to prices going up as superchargers, Tesla could be in a dire situation. So the money gained by increasing money on energy... Uh, maybe lost because of decreasing car sales. Obviously, Tesla took notice of the contention, the outrage online, 
and crunched some numbers, and so they've backtracked on it. A week later, since increasing their prices, they're now dialing back the price hike by 10% worldwide. I'll put a link to the article in the show notes. What do you think of that? Send us your comments. You can leave your comments on the YouTube. You can email me anytime. Hello at evnewsdaily.com. What are your thoughts on that? I tend to like big, bold moves that are well thought out and that whether they're popular or unpopular, they, the companies, whoever they are, not just Tesla, go with it. Because like we've made a decision. This is the best decision and give us the benefit of the doubt. And I always do give Tesla the benefit of the doubt. All EV makers, I do really, on this podcast, I'm such a huge fan of electrification. What I hate to see is outrage online, because so much outrage online is faux outrage. Like, I saw outrage from non-Tesla owners going, this is disgusting, I'm never buying one. And I hope that that wouldn't feed into business decisions. And they, they know what they're doing, but I, I hate that when a company go, oh, sorry, we got it wrong and we're backtracking. Like Sometimes they have to genuinely, if they make a bad decision. It's great to see companies listening to customers. Don't get me wrong when decisions are bad, but this wasn't, in my mind, a crazy decision. It was simply a readjustment of costs at superchargers because the supercharger network needs to break even. It's not a loss maker or a profit center. And if some of those chargers were underpriced or... They were losing money on them. That makes sense. What I didn't so much like was that they were redoing the prices based on demand. Well, that sounds like they're finding the busiest superchargers. I don't know. I'm, maybe I'm adding two and two and getting five. Area-based demand sounds like the most, the most, the busiest superchargers were then having a premium added to them, almost to disincentivize people from using them which would be a less good thing to do. That I would disagree with, by the way. So that would drive people to other charges that might be the same price and gets people off the supercharger network. I don't know. Every Everyone that I met in the UK at superchargers, uh, uh, people have talked about them getting busier here in the UK, but we haven't had the Model 3 effect yet. So I don't know what that's like in the US and things like Thanksgiving weekend where you go to use a supercharger and the stores are full, there's a big queue. I've, ne- I've, we, I've never, ever seen a queue for superchargers here in the UK, but it's very different to where you might be listening around the world where Teslas are more popular. Right, let's get on to question of the week. This week, I'd love to get your feedback. As always, keep your emails coming in, your comments as well. And that question of the week is set by myev.com. What's the best way to get your first experience of an EV? Uh, if you don't drive an EV yet, how would you like to get your first experience? Is it a test drive with a like a dealer? Is it hiring one? Maybe go to an experience centre where there's no pressure sales, but you... Have a play. Fully Charged Live is back this year. We're looking forward to Fully Charged Live year two in the UK. And I know that the plans, keeping everything crossed, is to be able to get some people into EVs and taking them out on uh, an, on a bit of the, the, I think it's called the South Circuit there. I really hope that comes off. That must be a nightmare with things like insurance and all those kind of things. But if they can pull it off, it's an incredible team at Fully Charged. Fingers crossed they do. If you're already an EV driver, if you take yourself back in time. How would you like to have got your first taste of electric motoring if indeed you would make any changes? Let me know and we'll read out all the answers on Sunday's podcast. As always, the email address is hello at evnewsdaily.com. Thank you very much to 176 patrons of the podcast whose generosity means that we get to make the show every single day and bring you this positive news. If you'd like me to add your name, uh, sorry, there's 178 patrons, uh, add your name uh, to the list. I'd love to be reading out your name tomorrow. Uh, then just drop by Patreon, p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com slash evnewsdaily. There are 365, a whole year's worth of podcasts waiting for you online. Uh, if you want to download them, uh, you can do. Uh, they're free to download. And in the meantime, you can subscribe on uh, your favourite podcast platform, or even, if you want to, uh, the YouTube audio. So you get the audio first and free and automatically. So come and catch up on the socials over the next day by searching EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day. I'll catch you tomorrow.